From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Here are the facts. Humanity has entered the dawn of a new age. Nuclear power plants, the majority of which use uranium, supply over 5% of the world's energy and over 10% of its electricity. In theory, nuclear power is a world-changing energy source, and as proponents at the IAEA have argued, the only feasible alternative to fossil fuels. In practice, however, it has devastating risks. From Fukushima to Chernobyl and Three Mile Island, malfunctions at nuclear power plants can poison surrounding areas for centuries. But, argue scientists in India, China, and elsewhere, it doesn't have to be this way. Nuclear power plants can also run on an element called thorium. Thorium is easier to find, produces less waste, and creates less radiation. So why aren't we using it? Here's where it gets crazy. For decades, theorists, pundits, and scientists have argued for the use of thorium as a power source. And though their cause has made some progress, the uranium fuel source still dominates the market. Why? At first glance, the situation seems anomalous. After all, thorium is approximately three times more abundant than uranium. To the average person, it may sound incredible that humanity didn't start with thorium in the first place. But the big question is this. Since it's true that thorium does have advantages, is it possible that some organizations have purposely suppressed the technology? The answer, and there is an answer, gets a bit complicated, and we'll need to travel back to the early days of nuclear research to understand how, to borrow a phrase from The Guardian's Natalie Bennett, uranium became the VHS to thorium's Betamax. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, early nuclear research before and during World War II focused on the development of weapons, and it was only later that scientists began focusing on peaceful applications of nuclear technology. Consider that the first atomic bomb was tested in 1945, but the first investigation of peaceful atomic energy did not begin until 1947. Since the original focus of the U.S. research was on military applications, uranium became the superior choice. As Forbes writer Marin Katusa points out, uranium's reaction process generates plutonium-239, which can be weaponized. Thorium, despite its potential advantages, does not. Experts at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Oak Ridge, Tennessee had already built a thorium reactor by the 1960s, and it was shut down under the Nixon presidency not because it didn't work, but because it didn't produce plutonium. With this context in mind, it's easy to see how the bulk of research and funding went to uranium rather than to thorium, but that doesn't explain why this has remained true in the modern day, and it doesn't have to. Fast forward to 2011. In the wake of the Fukushima meltdown, thorium underwent a revival. Today, government-sponsored scientists across the globe are aggressively pursuing thorium as a fuel source. China is aiming to be the world leader in what is often called the clean nuclear fuel. To be fair, thorium is no silver bullet. It isn't fissile, meaning that it has to be converted to be useful. And it could be used to create weaponry, but doing so would be far more difficult and generally speaking, not feasible. So, is there a conspiracy to suppress thorium technology? Not an overarching one, at least not at this point. If anything, many enthusiasts, including some government leaders, see thorium as the wave of the nuclear future. Determining the usefulness of thorium will require intense research and an enormous amount of funding. And let's not forget that as journalist Ambrose Evans Pritchard notes, established companies in the nuclear industry may well have a vested interest in blocking thorium due to their billions of dollars in sunk costs and their possible influence on government officials. Yet for countries such as India, China, and Russia, creating commercially viable thorium technology could change the nature of the energy race and international relations. Whether they succeed is most likely going to hinge on scientific concerns, but when the U.S. was pioneering the field of nuclear research, thorium just wasn't dangerous enough. Why didn't the U.S. push for thorium in the post-Cold War? Was there someone else intervening, such as established conglomerations of big oil or other power industries? If that's the case, then there's something they don't want you to know about thorium. And it may just have cost the U.S. the lead in the future of energy. Through 
nuclear energy explorations, man will continue to learn more about this new source of energy and to apply it to an ever-broadening horizon. At the same time, the health and safety of people everywhere will be assured by a continuing realistic radiation surveillance program. Our future generations deserve a heritage of greater freedom from want and care and confidence that nuclear energy will contribute to the establishment of universal peace.